In a sport in which mental strength is as important as physical conditioning, doubt can be the ultimate enemy. And even the most dominant of boxers can fall prey to this shadowy enemy. In 2004, Roy Jones Jr. reigned as boxing's emperor. Even major talents such as Floyd Mayweather Jr., Bernard Hopkins, and Manny Pacquiao failed to rival his accomplishments. And one look at his record clarified the issue. Jones had bested all class of fighters, barely losing rounds as he did so. So phenomenal was his speed and power that world class foes hesitated to punch. It's like one of those jet pilots. Even heavyweights failed to best him. Ooh, he's not he's not hurt. In 2003, after defeating John Reese to grab a heavyweight title, Jones was considered close to unbeatable. That very year, he dropped back down to the 175 pound division and took on an old amateur rival, Antonio Tarver. Jones struggled more than expected, coming precariously close to Lucy. On this occasion, Jones has to come back in the late rounds and he's doing it. What a performance now by Jones, reaching deep. Rematch, Tarver shocked the world by knocking the legend out. Jones then took on a journeyman, Glenkov Johnson, and spent the majority of the fight cowering on the ropes before suffering another knockout loss. A year later, and without a tune up, Jones challenged Tarver again. In the early rounds, the old Jones resurfaced as he dazzled his opponent and the crowd. But then, he stopped punching, and the fight devolved into Jones receding into a shell. He would lose a unanimous decision and later claim that he'd like the heart to engage in the war. Honestly, to beat a fight like that sometimes, you gotta get down and get gritted and be willing to chase him like Glenn Johnson does. And that's not really my style, you know where I'm from. And so today, we encounter a similar case. Five years ago, Anthony Joshua was considered the next great heavyweight of his generation. Standing at six feet and six inches tall, the undefeated Brit used every bit of his size to batter his opponent. The buzz, the hype that is building around Anthony Joshua, fight by fight, just took another big leap forward. In 2017, he stopped the former king, Vladimir Klitschko, in a battle that saw him rise from the canvas. Those days seemed long gone. After several high-profile wins, the intent was to pit Joshua with another undefeated puncher the American, Deontay Wilder. But when the Brits' fight with Jarrell Miller fell apart, he fought the late replacement, Andy Luis. Fighting abroad in the USA, Joshua intended to put on a show, and early on, he delivered. Luis mixes it up, good over, the hook, puts Luis down. But Joshua underestimated his opponent's ability. Britt never recovered from the punch and spent the remaining rounds on autopilot. We just haven't seen a fully engaged Anthony Joshua showing the normal volume. Then Ruiz struck. Joshua seemed physically able to continue, but his lethargic response was enough to convey the message. He'd had enough. Joshua saw an immediate rematch. During the build-up, Joshua said all the right things. If that was the case, I would have never been here now if I would have been defined by my losses previously. And if I let the loss on June 1st define me, who knows what the next 10 years of my boxing career can go on to be. He entered the fight lighter than in his first fight, denoting his hard work. In the end, he outboxed Ruiz and earned his revenge. The fight was uneventful, as Joshua, refusing to overcommit, did the bare minimum to outpoint Ruiz. This was understandable, 
since exchanging with Reese had led to his downfall. But Reese had also come in severely overweight. Was a subdued performance the best Joshua could muster against an obese opponent? Joshua then successfully defended his title against contender Kubrat Pulev. The Brit refused to fall for his opponent's tirades. You talk too much, bro. Whoever you're in there with, these fighters are going to fight with. I respect you, but tomorrow I show you. I respect you, but tomorrow I show you. Tomorrow I show you. I'm amazing. I'm amazing. I'm This was vintage Joshua, as he unleashed his arsenal, easily dismantling his opponent and route to a stoppage. He then fought the former cruiserweight champion, the undefeated Alexander Uzik. Uzik was a smaller fighter, and even at cruiserweight, he'd failed to score many stoppages. Thus, many spectators expected Joshua to trample the Ukrainian. But what Uzik lacked in size, he made up with skill and speed. Joshua tried unboxing the boxer, a mistake which cost him dearly, as Uzik, always one step ahead, outpointed him and route to a unanimous decision win. Like most high-profile boxers of the past, Joshua switched trainers, a tacit way of declaring that the loss had not been his fault. Joshua recruited Robert Garcia, a trainer renowned for offensive-minded boxers. Uzik and Joshua rematched in 2022, this time Joshua performed better, seemingly calmer, while investing to the body. But Uzik refused to concede and scored another victory. Since then, Joshua has scored two wins in 2023, but his performances, as well as his behavior, have been puzzling. After the Uzik defeat, Joshua exploded in a tirade of inanities and excuses. If you knew my story, you would understand the passion. I ain't no amateur boxer from five years old that was an elite prospect from a youth, bro. I'm not a 12 round fighter. Look at me. I'm a new breed of heavyweights. All them heavyweights, Mike Tyson, Sonny Liston, Jack Dempsey. Oh, yeah, you don't throw combinations like Rocky Marciano. Because I ain't 14 stone, that's why. He also engaged in minor scuffles. You keep it professional. What are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Then he switched trainers again this time employing the services of Derrick James. At the time, James was seen as a red-hot commodity, as he possessed the undefeated welterweight champion Errol Spence, junior middleweight champion Jermel Charlo, and the promising lightweight Frank Martin. For his comeback bout, Joshua encountered the American Jermaine Franklin. Franklin had come off a highly competitive defeat to veteran Dylan White. And many felt Franklin had deserved a nod. But despite his ability and toughness, many expected the American to crumble in the face of the bigger, more seasoned Joshua. The Brit dominated the bout, but he never came close to stopping Franklin. On top of this, Joshua displayed inconsistent defense, as well as a bloody nose. To make matters worse, he also clinched in many instances in which the illegal tactics seemed unnecessary. Then, he tried to shift the blame onto Franklin. This had been the second post-fight display of tomfoolery from the giant. Next, Joshua signed on to rematch an old nemesis, Dylan White. But a positive PED test from White derailed the bout. And so, Joshua fought a lead replacement in Robert Hellenius. Hellenius performed better than expected, landing his share of shots while making Joshua flail in the wind. Joshua finally connected in the seventh round and celebrated. Once again, Joshua had looked subpar while displaying yet another bloody nose. Some might dismiss a scarlet nose as insignificant damage normally sustained during a boxing match, but the point is that Joshua used to walk away clean from opponents of this caliber. Thus, many are now wondering what, if anything, is wrong with Anthony Joshua. And more importantly, can he defeat his next rumored opponent, the hard-hitting Deontay Wilder? It must be said that, despite looking less than stellar in his past two bouts, Joshua is still winning. It's possible that he was just working on new things against opponents he knew he could easily outpoint. But one has to admit that his custom of switching trainers is concerning. 
Moreover, although his new coach Derek James might have been voted 2022's Trainer of the Year, he has since hit a cold streak, as Spence was easily defeated by Terence Crawford back in late July. Moreover, the lightweight Frank Martin was arguably defeated in his last bout against Artem Harantunian. Combine this with Joshua's lackluster performances, and suddenly, James doesn't quite look like the guru some made him out to be. Ultimately, Joshua will have to rebound on his own merits. This October, Joshua will turn 34 years of age, and though that's not old for a heavyweight, the reality remains that Joshua is no longer a kid. He's a former world champion and still one of the top heavyweights in the world. But it seems as if he's trying to box like the former king, Vladimir Klitschko, controlling bounce with his jab, scoring with the occasional right hand, and clinching. A lot. This approach allowed Klitschko to dominate for close to a decade. But the Ukraine was a master of control. And while Joshua's no dummy, he pales in comparison to Klitschko's mastery of precision and range. He needs to realize that it's his physicality, and not pure skill, that's been the major source of his success. But has Joshua ever truly been that imposing a figure? Back in 2018, when Joshua was still considered the division's king, the Brit dialed in a boring performance against the undefeated Joseph Parker. In that bout, Joshua seemed unable or unwilling to press the action. The positive was that he displayed the ability to outbox a faster man, thus showing that he did possess boxing skills. But a fight earlier, Joshua had boxed a shorter Carlos Takem, a fighter of similar caliber to Jermaine Franklin. In that bout, Joshua started off well, stunning and dropping the cam while remaining economical. But he still managed to tire and eight shots from the tough contender. The stoppage was widely criticized, to the point where Joshua had to address it. Listen. I come to fight, I don't sit on the edge and make decisions. I have no interest of what's going on with the officials, that's not my job. So returning to the past fights clarifies the issue. Joshua has never been a highly aggressive boxer. He's a natural boxer puncher inside a 6 feet 6 inch body. And it's very likely that the first rebound has only made him more hesitant. The issue remains whether his sheepish approach will be enough to defeat Deontay Wilder. Although lighter than Joshua, Wilder is taller by a reputed inch. And though he lacks Joshua's boxing ability, Wilder holds the one thing that's traumatized Joshua. Raw power. This is where Joshua's hesitancy could cost him defeat. Staying outside and patiently trying to outbox Wilder gives the American the range to land his bomb. Many opponents, including the undefeated Tyson Fury, have discovered that it's easy to outbox Wilder. But the best approach is to pressure the American. Because the reality is that a big right hand is all that Wilder possesses. His lack of equilibrium, a consequence stemming partly from lack of competent trainers, has seen him stumble across the ring. His awful technique has resulted in subpar defense, which consists of using his height to lean away from shots. This lack of technique fails to provide him with confidence. And so, he spends most rounds jittery and thus burning through fuel. Bad positioning also prevents him from setting his feet to counter, unless his opponent's barging wildly and unprotected. And burying his right hand, he also tends to slap with his shots. And for a tall boxer, his jab is severely lacking in power and sharpness. Things grow darker for Wilder when you consider his inactivity. He had one fight in 2020, a one-sided beating to Tyson Fury, followed by close to 20 months of inactivity. He sustained another beating at the hands of the Brit in 2021. His last victory came about a year later in 2022, when he dispatched of the affirmation Robert Hellenius in under a round. The inactivity raises two questions. How rusty would he be against a man who's already notched two bouts in 2023 and at 37 years of age, soon to be 38? How much does he have left after the two violent defeats to Fury? All things considered, Joshua's chances against an older, inactive and severely limited boxer look promising. But does Joshua have the style and wherewithal to pressure Wilder? Many a fighter have managed to corner the American, but they all eventually back away, failing to understand that Wilder's power is greatly reduced when he's on the retreat. Joshua must remember this. 
On top of this, Wilder's victim, Robert Hellenius, was also his sparring partner. This might explain why he employs some of his unorthodox defensive movements, and Joshua had trouble scoring against those very same movements. A dominant win over Wilder would make people forget about Joshua's last two mundane performances, and so Joshua would have to press the issue with a great degree of assertiveness. Based on what you've seen in this video, does the Brit still have it? Or would he become yet another victim to Wilder's soul-snatching power? Let us know what you think in the comment section below, don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy folks, thanks for watching.